Welcome to today's webinar on static pressure. Let's start by understanding why static pressure is important. Firstly, it is common for engineers to calculate the pressure drop through a system during a peak demand when everything is running to its maximum capacity to see if you get enough pressure throughout the system. But the opposite scenario is equally important, and this is static pressure. So it's about when the system is not at a peak demand, like during the middle of the night, when there's going to be minimal flow through the network. During this scenario, the pressure will increase, and it will increase significantly. So the reason it's important is because the higher that pressure gets, the more likely it is that components in the system will break. If that happens on your design, it's going to mean that your design is non-compliant, which puts a lot of risk on you and your company's reputation. And it's going to cost a lot of money to fix, and nobody is going to want to pay that. But don't worry, because these problems only occur for engineers that don't do the calculations. There's nothing to worry about if you do your calculations. So you're in the right place to learn about this today to make sure that it won't happen on your projects. OK, so let's take an overview of what is involved in the static pressure calculations. Firstly, there is the starting pressure where your system begins. And it is important to use the best case pressure here because you're designing for a non-peak scenario when the pressure will be at its highest. Then there is the point where you need to know the pressure, such as at a fixture. Then water moving through the pipe causes friction, which causes pressure drop. However, these calculations are based on no flow rate, meaning that there is no pressure drop through the pipe. Similarly, at the fitting, there's no flow rate, so there's no friction, and there's no pressure drop. And likewise at the valves. So at this point, we have the same pressure at the flow source as we do at the fixture. However, if the fixture is higher than the starting point, the pressure will decrease. So in this example, we started with 550 kPa. No pressure was lost through the pipes, valves or fittings. But the fixture is now 2 meters higher than the starting point. So we will lose roughly 20 kPa, meaning that we get 530 kPa at the fixture. As we just saw, there is only one consideration in the static pressure calculation, and that is the vertical height difference. So this makes it quite an easy calculation to undertake. So just less than 0.1 bar per meter, just less than 10 kPa per meter, and 0.43 psi per foot. But it is important that pressure doesn't just decrease, as we saw then as we went up the building. If, you're, if you go down a building, your pressure will increase. So just something to be aware of. And we'll go through this now in some real life design scenarios so we can make these calculations feel like second nature to you. Using H2X's design software, we're going to look at a few different scenarios just to help you understand the fundamentals of static pressure. So to get started, we'll add a flow source. We're not looking at residual pressure today, but we'll make that 100 to match static. And we'll put the height to zero. So it's the height and the static pressure that are important, so please remember those. And we'll draw the pipe layout. And we'll put a node on the end. We're going to ignore the flow rate because we're not going to look at any of the residual pressure calculations. So not much to see here. The most important thing is what height is the pipe at, and we'll put that at zero meters like we have here. Of course, just to recap, we've got 100 kPa here, and this pipe and the flow source is also at zero meters. So just have a think what you think static pressure might be at the, the, uh, the node here. So the static pressure is also at 100 kPa, because there's no pressure drop through the pipe. So let's just go back and maybe this time I'll copy and paste it. Have a think what might happen if I add some bends to this pipe. So it's all still at zero meters, so I'll just make a note of that. And as I click results, we can see that the pressure is still 100 kPa. If I did a valve to this now, it would still be 100. Because like we went through earlier, it doesn't matter about the pipe, lengths, valves, or fittings. It's all about 
Well, the only thing that matters is any height difference. So let me copy and paste this once more. Now I am going to increase the height of this pipe connecting to the node. So just have a think while I do this and click results. What's going to happen to the pressure here as the, the pipe and the node move higher than the starting point at the flow source? So we'll put that at five meters and make a note. And we have lost quite a lot of pressure. Because remember, if you go up five meters, you're losing almost 10 kPa per meter, which is getting us down to 50. Another example now, whilst I do it, have a think what the answer might be. But instead of going up five meters, we're going to make it be minus five meters. And the opposite has happened to what we just last saw, where as it was going up five meters, we were losing pressure as we were going away from gravity. But as we're as was moving down towards it, we're actually gaining the pressure. So we're gaining almost 50 kPa once again. So one more example. Um, I'll copy this one. So with this example, just remember that it's all at zero meters. However, if we just move this one to say, let's do five meters again. Make a note of that being five. But important to know that these two are at zero meters and we'll label that. So we're coming out at zero. It's going up five, but also coming back down and then connecting here. So as I click results, just have a little test of yourself and see what you think the pressure here will be. So the pressure is 100 kPa. The reason is anything that goes up must come down. So it's not actually losing pressure through the pipes or the fittings again. So what's important to know is once the water goes up the five meters here, the pressure will be lower. But because it's then coming back down, the pressure is gonna, well, as we can see, become 100 kPa exactly again. So it's quite a tricky one to be, to be across, but just remember it's the difference between the flow source and the fixture or the node that's important. Let's look at a more realistic design scenario now, where we might have 540 kPa coming into the building, static pressure, and that being one meter below the ground. So let's do a simple design. We'll just add one WC, and we'll connect that up with the pipe. So this WC is one meter above the ground, so two meters uh, difference to the flow source. So as we click results, Pretty clear to see that we're getting more than 500 kPa, which is the maximum threshold in most countries for static pressure. So we're getting a warning here, and pretty much what we need to do is add a pressure reduction valve. So in the first example, I'm just going to put it on the branch, the WC here. And the way it works is you can enter in any pressure that you want. So if I put 450 kPa here, no matter what the pressure coming in is, it is going to step it down to 450. Um, you should always be aware that there's generally a two to one step down ratio. So if you have a thousand kPa coming in, you don't want to step that down less than 500. Um, say if you need to go from 1000 to 300, you want to go from like 1000 to 600 and then 600 to 300. Um, that's based on manufacturer recommendations, just something to be aware of. But in this example, going from 540 to 450 is, a, is not a problem. And as we click results, most importantly, we can see the warning has gone away. But I also just want to bring your attention to the, that the valve has not been sized to match the pipe size, because that's not how this works. They are sized independently, and it's usually smaller than the pipe. Uh, this is just to make sure the valve functions properly. Um, so just, just something to be aware of. If we put a 20 mil valve in there, it might not be too much of a problem at this size, but the bigger the pipes get, matching the pipe size is, is going to cause you a lot of problems.
Let's look on the 65 mil pipe. Let's move the pressure reduction valve there, which can be a good idea um, because you don't want to put too many valves throughout your system. If you don't have to, you'd rather just put one central one in. So let's go to the 450 here now. Click results. And we can see that we're still getting less than 500 here, which is great. And we'll also have had that effect elsewhere on the system. But once again, let's look at the size here. So to deal with the peak flow rate, we only need a 40 mil valve. So quite a lot less small than 65. If we just put one 65 mil valve in here, it would have caused a lot of noise through the system and a lot of other issues as well. And then importantly, because the system often doesn't run anywhere close to the peak demand, which requires the 65 mil pipe and the 40 mil valve, it might be running at like 10% of its capacity. That small flow rate for a large valve would once again cause problems like noise. So what you want to do is have a bypass valve, a smaller one, that the water can go through when it's at a lower flow rate. Uh, so just really important to understand this. It's, we do have a blog on it from Kalefi, which is really informative. So recommend going there to find out more information. But the one takeaway from this is don't just put a 65 mil valve onto a 65 mil pipe. Uh, there is a lot more engineering that needs to go into it. On a more complex example here, we have a hot water recirculation system. We've got levels below the flow source, so the pressure will be gained coming down here. We also go up quite a lot of levels. And to get up all those levels, we still need a booster pump, although we've got high static pressure coming in. So quite a few complicated things to work through here. But first thing, just because you've added a booster pump doesn't mean that you don't need pressure reduction valves. Because yes, you might have done your pressure loss calculations and realized that you need this to get pressure at the top of your system. But that is using a completely different starting pressure and of course using pressure drop through the whole system to get the results. You still need to do your static calculation because it's a higher number and you're not losing anything through the system. So just something to be aware of. Don't think because you've added a pump that you don't need redu pressure reduction valves. Uh, and vice versa. They are standalone calculations and you need to do both of them. The next tricky thing is you cannot put pressure reduction valves on hot water recirculation systems. This is a really complex subject and we do have a blog on it. So if you search our website for balancing recirculation systems, hot water, you will find it. But essentially, Putting pressure reduction valves on some of the circuits will completely unbalance the system and it won't work. So the tricky part to this is where do we put the valves? Essentially on a cold water system, you can put them anywhere. But on a hot water flow and return system, on the inlet to the plant is a good location on the cold supply. But if that isn't going to be sufficient, you will need to put them on the branches where the water is not recirculating. And this will mean that you'll need to add a lot more to your system because you'll need them on every branch coming from the recirculation. And there could be hundreds or even thousands on a really large project. But that's not your problem. Uh, that's what the calculations say need to happen. There are other alternatives if you read our blog. But in this example here, we're going to look at pressure reduction valves. So I'm going to first put one on the inlet supply to the building. So if I put 450 kPa here, what do we think is going to happen? It isn't going to work because although it's limiting the pressure coming in, we still need to add on a lot of pressure here to get water to the top of the building. So that's not going to work. And as we can see, we're getting a warning here, slightly over 500 kPa and definitely below it's, it's increasing as well. So that's not going to work. All right, so let me delete this one. What about now if we put it on the outlet of the booster pump? What do you think will happen? Well, we are not getting the warning here anymore, which is great. However, we have caused problems elsewhere in the system. So essentially we're getting a warning now to say this pump cannot reach, it's impossible to get enough pressure at the top of the building 
because we're limiting it, limiting it to 450 here. So it's pretty much the pump's trying to add on enough pressure to get to the top, and then we're limiting it with this pressure reduction valve. So that's not going to work either. All right, so the next logical approach would be to, okay, we have, we have warnings on ground, B1, level one, level two. So a logical thing to do would be to, or to think would be to put pressure reduction valves on the system here. So let's do that, 450 and 450. And remember, we'd have to do this on every level. But once again, it's not allowed because the pressure reduction valve is forbidden in this location. It's on a flow and return system. So what we would have to do is to move it onto the branches. So we could leave the cold on there if we wanted to, but we're gonna have to move this onto the dead leg here. And if we put that to 450, we can finally see now that we're not getting too much pressure here. So quite a lot to take in there, but that is why the pressure calculations or static pressure calculations are so important because you really do need to do a lot of trial and error to work out the best location. To summarize everything and to act as a checklist for your next calculation, the steps that you'll need to follow are finding out your starting pressure, and remember to use the highest possible number here. Then you're going to calculate the pressure gain or the pressure drop through any vertical height changes. You're then going to want to check the pressure at your most advantaged fixture. Is it suitable? If it's not, you'll need to add a pressure reduction valve. And then you want to work your way towards the most disadvantaged fixture. Once again, check if the pressure is suitable, and if it isn't, add a pressure reduction valve. And just remember that if the most advantaged fixture needs a pressure reduction valve and the most disadvantaged doesn't. There will be a point in the middle of that system which will change from needing a pressure reduction valve to not needing one. So you will need to go through and find that location. And then lastly, for any pressure reduction valves, don't just size it for the peak flow rate. Remember that you will need to size it for low flow rates too. So that is everything for today. I hope this helps you with your future designs. If you have any questions about the calculations or you'd like to know more about H2X's design software, you can reach me directly at jonathan at h2xengineering.com or you can check out our website, h2xengineering.com, where there are lots of other technical resources just like this one.